Hey everyone, Jefferson Graham here. Uh, we are live. We got the iPhone Photo Show podcast brought to you by Smug Mug today. And we're live on YouTube as well. My good old friend, Sean Boyd, Doc Rock, will be joining us shortly. He will be calling in any second. We are going to be talking about a lot of stuff. We're going to be very gear heavy today because my friend Doc is majorly into gear as I am photo gear. We're going to talk about some new surveys that came out this week about the iPhone that are, I think are very interesting. We're going to talk about a new app that lets you connect your camera directly to the iPhone and use it as a monitor from Capture One. We've got that going. We've got a new road app that Doc is really excited about. We may even get into editing a video on, on Final Cut. I'm sorry, editing video on the iPad with Final Cut. So a lot of stuff is going on. Uh, if you're out there, please raise your hand, say hi, and let me know that you're listening. And we're going to take a lot of questions today as well. Uh, let me begin as we wait for Doc, uh, who has been live for many hours today. So he's doing us a favor here. Um, let's talk with about about a new survey. Hi, Bev. Thanks for being here. A new survey that says that nobody looks at their photos, most people anyway, after they've taken them. They just sit on their iPhone or, or whatever mobile phone they have, and they sit in that camera roll. And that's a shame. I got some ideas there. Um, people on the average have over 3,100 photos on their phone, says this survey that was put out by Mixbook, which is a photo book maker, uh, maybe a little self-serving, uh, because it, there's this is what they want to hear, that nobody's doing anything with their pictures. But I, I think they're right, though. They said that the worst offenders, the people who have the most photos who never look at them, are in Indiana, California, and Mississippi. And the state most likely to have people looking at their photos are South Carolina. Okay, so thank you, South Carolina, for that. Um, the, I, I just saw, I, again, the average number of photos is 3130. Uh, I've got over 12,000 on mine, and I clean it up a lot because I back up everything on Smug Mug, uh, so I try to clean it down a lot. I also have 450 videos that are sitting right there. Uh, Bev is saying hi from Virginia. Um, okay, so what are we going to do about this? Okay, because uh, I, I know a perfect solution. I'd like to hear from others out there as well. I think if you're not going to print and if you're not going to do other things with your photos and you're just going to leave them there, here comes our friend, Doc Rock. Here he is. Let's uh, switch to host plus guest. And let me bring him right in there. Bring him right in. Hey, there. Doc. Ooh. Hey, Hi. Doc. I, dang, you're professional now. Yeah, we're trying for <laughs> yeah, a good look here. We're trying for a good look here. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah. So I was just talking so about, this talking about this new survey that says, survey actually, that before says, I go any actually, further, before I go any further, I'm getting the echo in my I'm ear. I'm getting the echo in my ear. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. want to fix that. Okay, mm -hmm. tell me. That's not okay, you. Okay, tell me. No, no, that's me, I believe. I was just doing another stream, and in that stream... I had to do this, and now I'm not doing that stream, so I'm done, and now it's gone. Okay. You're right. It's gone. Thank you, Doc Rock. Right. Say, everybody, say hi, everyone, to Doc Rock, otherwise known as Sean Boyd. He is the, the face of Ecamm, and he is a gearhead like I am, and we speak the same language. And uh, uh, we, we got together the other day, and my wife said, hey, what did you talk about? And I said, f-stop, shutter speeds, lighting, uh, accessories, you name it. And she goes, boy, is that boring. Well, it's not boring to me. I had a great time. It's not boring to us. Yeah, this is what we do. Hey, you know what is so crazy? Um, I was just watching a stream, not a stream, a video by Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, and he stated some of the stuff that we talked about. So we were talking about the Vision Pro headset. And, you know, I was like, well, first of all, we got to stop calling it a headset because that was not going to allow us to say that. They don't want to hear that because the word headset or VR will just make people think it's the same as what the current fray is. And then Marquez rewatched the presentation. They did not mention VR a single time right. in that entire two hours. 
because it's not really a VR headset. It's more XR, if you're going to be true, which is AR, VR mixed together. And it, uh, it's a spatial computer, right? And right. that's what they want you to go with, right? And then the other thing that he noticed in the Apple presentation, they not one time did they mention the word AI. Yeah, and, and Tim Cook never wore, th wore this thing either and wouldn't allow himself to be photographed, and neither did anybody else from Apple. So that's a really funny thing. Let's get back to that in a minute. I want to follow up. I started off talking about this new survey that said most people uh, take all these pictures and they never even look at them. They just sit on their phones. And uh, that's a, a mixed book put out this survey. I certainly look at my pictures, but I know most people are sitting there swiping most of the time looking for stuff. But what do we do? What solutions do we have? I have, which I think is a pretty good one. But let's start with you first, Doc. Um, what, what would you say to people who never look at their pictures after they've taken them? How could we get them more into their lives? Well, first of all, I journal. So... In the course of journaling, I insert the photos. And part of the thing of journaling is to go back every three, six months to a year and see what you're doing. So what was I doing 90 days ago? What was I doing half a year ago? What was I doing last year this time? What was I doing five years ago? I can see all of that real simple in day one journal, right? That's the app that I use. Um, Apple is making their own as part of the OS. That helps. The other thing that I think that everybody should do is right there on your phone, it puts it right there and it, it, it just make it a, a, widget a widget on your phone. Yeah. So that way you'll see stuff. And what happens to me all the time is when it goes to bring up a relevant photo, I go, oh yeah, I remember that time, you know, we were at Hermosa Beach eating at the good stuff. And then maybe I'll send it to you or text it to you. So a friend of mine, Kelly Gumont, you may have heard of her before. She's a tech writer. She just sent me a picture from 12 years ago today where we were making Dr. Pepper cakes. Okay. <laughs> so that's a good way to do it. Um, my recommendation is there's something is to use your uh, iPhone and do the, it's called the uh, wallpaper, the wallpaper photo shuffle. So you can put uh, a whole collection of photos that will, will fly across the screen. Every time you open up your phone, you'll get a different picture. And at least then you're going to get a, 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 a at least you're going to get to see the dang things. Um, you can set them to be nature, people, and featured and mix them all together. Yes. So that's a good idea. Uh, and they've taken it a step further in iOS 17 because I have the beta. <laughs> Um, uh, Bev says she, she looks at them, but recently got Sky Ryan Wi-Fi digital photo frame, picture frame, and downloads her favorites. Okay. Now, I'm assuming that Bev is a she. It could be a he. I'm not sure. Bev, are you he or she? I'm not sure. Uh, but Bev will let us know. Um, okay. Tell us about the beta and tell us what you can do with photos in the beta doc. Well, it's similarly how you do the photo shuffle on the back wall, but... If you put, now you can put widgets on there, which you can't already do on the iPhone. They've added it to the iPad. Um, you will also look at it more. You know what I mean? Because the widgets I go to all the time. Like, for instance, right now, I have the no more schedules today. You were the last one. Um, it's 79 degrees outside. And my watch has three quarters of the charge. So by having to look at my phone for this relevant information, carrot weather is there most of the time with something snarky to say, I'm always looking at the page. And so therefore you see the, the image that's there. Um, and so now they've made it so that if it is a live photo, it will actually make a slow motion action of that live photo. And so I think that also brings you into the I want to take more pictures and pay more attention to my pictures mindset. Well, I think people are taking pictures. They're just not looking at them according to the survey. And of course we didn't mention printing because everybody should print, uh, particularly thinking about the next generation. Uh, you know, uh, some of us grew up with photo books and photo prints and photo albums and the next generation is not. And, uh, if we ever want to leave any memories behind, you know, all they got is this. And I think they need some printed photos. So. It's so funny you say that because we grew up 
on any holiday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, come to mind, Mother's Day, uh, and sit down and open up the photo book and go through the photo album. We've seen all those pictures a hundred times. Every time we go another holiday, we all go through the book again. I do make slideshows for my family, but it's only for the, you know, the older ones. I make them for mom and mother-in-law and stuff like that. Cause they just get it. It tickles them pink. But I think on a normal basis, we don't sit around and go through our photo albums like that. No, we should. And just to but go back, I, I made slideshows with real slides, you know, once upon a time, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right? With, with the Kodak 300. That's right. <laughs> That's right. God, by, by the way, Bev, those donuts. Bev wants us to know that Bev is a female. So there we go. Thank you, Hi, Bev. Bev. And thanks for being here, Bev. Appreciate it. Um, I have another survey to talk about. Now, um, okay, so survey says the iPhone continues to be the most used camera on Flickr. According, uh, accounting for over 150 million photos on Flickr, 31.79% of the total. Which is not a surprise. I, 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 well, actually, I'm sorry. I am surprised. I would think it would be 95%. So uh, I think there's a lot of older pictures on Flickr. Uh, the most popular, but here, okay. The most popular model is the Apple iPhone 11, which has uh, 13 million tags on Flickr. And that is a sad commentary because if you really want to look back at the iPhone 11 versus the 14 and you're interested in photography, you've lost a lot. So I did the old compare the models today and um, there's a lot there. There's a lot that you're missing. I if think you're I have a... Go ahead. I have an interesting input. Yeah. That's because since the iPhone 11, Flickr was acquired... A, during that acquisition, a bunch of people didn't go with. So the data is, I wouldn't say it's anecdotal, but it's missing a superset because a bunch of people left Flickr before, during, and after the acquisition. And it was a great acquisition. Trust me, like we needed, Smug Mug is our favorites, but that's because we're photographers and we know better, right? The general population doesn't know better. A lot of them also after the 11 in 12, Apple opened up iCloud to add extra. And if you did Apple one, you got another two terabytes. So people weren't as freaked out, you know, and a bunch of other services have come since then. So I think part of it is because Flickr is losing its mana, sorry, power. I will not use Hawaiian words today. <laughs> um, it, Flickr has lost some of its power and that's why their, num their numbers are askew. We need okay. a different source. Well, now. let's say, for the sake of argument, that m most people have the iPhone 11 and didn't do the upgrade out of that 2 billion people who have iPhones. Let's say that's true, because we don't know. But let's say it's true. Let's talk about what they're losing out on. If they're sitting there with the iPhone 11 and saying, well, I don't need to upgrade. This camera is fine. Well... The iPhone 11 had no MagSafe, which is a kind of a nice thing. I kind of like it on the back. The iPhone 11 came in 64 gigabytes of storage versus 128 gigabytes. Um, and, and their quote-unquote telephoto lens was 52 millimeter. And when you went up to the 12, you went to 65 millimeter. And now we're at 77. Now we've got a, a really a great working camera uh, th with the lens that I use on my Sony at 24 to 70, except now I've got a 13 to 77 millimeter. I'm way more versatile. So you're way better off with at least a 13 or 14, which uh, I'm going to ask, ask your uh, doc for his comments. And then uh, there's a question that will definitely come up. What do you have to say? Well, it's funny because I have 12, 13, and 14. So I have 12 Pro, 13 Pro Max, 14 Pro Max, and 100%. The last three jumps have been massive. And what's funny is every time some the the the, the uh, YouTube verse goes crazy, it's, oh, the camera's not that much of an upgrade. I'm like, because you're not really paying attention or you don't really know what you're talking about. Because even from the 13 to 14, it was a pretty big jump. 
on 48 megapixels. Let's start there, right? So, yes, it's there. And no, I know I get not everybody has any reason to change their phone every year, but Apple does make it easier. Originally, as tech people, when we did the upgrade every year, it was kind of expensive. Now, it doesn't really do anything. My, right, well, my, let's talk logistics. So say so you're going to spend $1,200, 12 to $1,400 for the phone. Okay. 16. Once, what, 1600 Okay. He spent 1600 because he got the one terabyte uh, storage. Gotta be. Okay. So let's say, <laughs> let's say just to be fair, $1,500 and then you use it every day, 365 a days a year, 20, 20, well, let's say 10 hours a day, right? You use this thing more than anything that you come into contact with. Okay. And I'm not as good as math as Doc Rocket. 410. 410. So that's uh, $4.10 a day. 410 a day. Okay. $4.10 a day for the device that you will use more than, I mean, you're going to use this more than your car, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Okay. So buy the phone for $1,500 and then you're going to sell it the next year for 700, right? 700, 800 bucks. And then your, your 410 is actually going to be about $2 a day that you have yep. had the privilege of having the latest and greatest. So there goes that, which segues ways into the, ke the question that I get. Uh, I'll get it all, all summer long, which is, I want to buy a new phone. Which one should I buy? And should I buy it now? And of course, the answer is absolutely not. Correct? <laughs> no, not at all. Don't think about it. Do not pass gold. Do not collect $200. Just don't freaking move. And actually, again, I, I know that all the services have it. I use the Apple plan. I use the Apple upgrade plan because basically my phone calculates out to about $68 a month. And I just give it back and get the next one. It's the, still $60 a month for about the past five years. It never changes. They go, but you never get to own the phone. Phone is like a car to me. You don't want to own it. No, you don't I, need I, it. I, why, why do you need it? Well, well what yeah, difference does it make? You've got the pictures, matter. which are transactional, and your contacts, yes. you move. And you, there's really nothing that you need to own on it. But anyway, why not buy a new phone now? Well, it's June well, 15th or 16th, I think. June 15th is today. And unless and you have dropped in the water where, you know, you have no choice, we're going to get a new phone. I'm lucky. It always comes out on my birthday, <laughs> and it normally can pick it up like a week after. So I'm September 12th. The announcement is normally around my birthday. Right and after the 4th. Up the, yeah. the Friday after, you're September four. No, no, the uh, it's generally right after Labor Day, so oh, that's when they say, make the wow, announcement. You're you're uh, a virgin too. I mean Virgo. I am not, but I, I I'm a June baby. But anyway, uh, well, happy birthday, then. Thank you. The yeah, yeah. So so three months from now, there'll be the latest greatest iPhone they've ever released, and they will say that it's lighter, it's Every faster, <laughs> it's it's um. It, it's it's uh, it's got the best chip in the world. It's got upgraded camera. It I, hopefully we're going to have a telephoto, a real telephoto lens. We're going to get 10x, 20x. Who knows? That's our hope. Anyway, and to to buy an iPhone 14 Pro for twelve hundred dollars or whatever now is just total insanity. Uh, if you're really stuck. As, as, as Doc said, if you dropped it in the water and it was inoperable, which, of course, it's not because it's water resistant, buy an SE, buy, buy a used phone as a secondary phone and hold on to it and then get rid of it again. That, that's what I would say. That's true. I, I definitely agree with. So this go round, having kept my, well, actually, I started it with my 12, having kept my 12 and kept my 13, um, I'm... I just think it's worth, for, especially for what I do, I think it's worth actually having multiple phones. But you're right. The amount of stuff that we use our phone for, and what, I think it's the most used device in our house. I use the phone more than my TV, my Apple TV, my car. I think the only thing I use more than my phone is probably the air fryer. Uh, there's nothing that could compare. There's, I mean, my, my, my MacBook, my MacBook. Okay. So I, my, my, my uh, phone and my computer, period. That's it. The TV, my house is on for an hour a night. If that, um, there's nothing, nothing. And I don't go on 10 hour drives daily either. I will this summer, but uh, is soon, but I don't now. We have some questions coming in. You sort of answered, but let's, uh, let's give Greg his due. Um, first of all, before we answer Greg's question, uh, you downloaded iOS 17, the beta version. Tell everybody how to do it, if they'd like to do it. Um, you, did you pay $100 well, for this? 
Oh yeah, I'm in the de- I'm in the developer program. I've yeah. been in since day one, so that's just part. Of that's a hundred dollars a year. Yes, it's hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. So, so so because you're in the developers program, they send you a link. You click it and you download it and you put it on one of your older phones. Correct. Never oh. put it on your only phone unless yeah. you're completely psycho. Really and, and, brave. Uh, <laughs> or you don't do anything important where if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. So and, that's another and, reason and why I'm like I keep our friend here phones. with uh, multiple phones. So yeah, 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 you got. That's the reason why I put the, it on there. The public beta beta will be out sometime in July, and by the time it gets to that, it's normally relatively stable, but it's still a risk that you take. So don't don't mess around with it. You Luckily, did. I have. You did not try live stickers. Right. Uh, no, but I did do stickers in the chat, like like press on a picture of Jeff's face and turn it into a sticker and try to send it. That's pretty cool. That is oh. so much fun. I can't wait. Be- question from Bev. There have been times when I'm shooting macro images with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and when I click the shutter button, nothing happens. No photo. What am I doing wrong? Uh, I'd have to be there to see it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I sometimes have trouble with the Zoom and getting the Zoom coming in and out, but I usually just close the app and then start it up again. How about you, Doc? Um, whenever the screen is doing that, I use a side trigger. Um, sometimes it's just your finger, you know, not hitting at the right angle while you're trying to hold the phone weirdly to get a macro shot. You know, you're just not able to get good purchase on that button. So I use the side trigger yeah, and see if that triggers the button. We um, did it the other day. We were trying to do a selfie, and then I was like, Jeff, if I reach the selfie button, then the pose just looks odd. So I just like, T-kick. I clicked it. And then I was like, oh, yeah. It's yeah. easy to forget about the side button since we no longer have headphones. I always triggered my shutter with the headset. That was my life, and then they took it away. Uh, Bev says it's almost like I'm too close. And, of course, you know mm-hmm. the answer then. Move back a little bit, Right. Let me try this. Now she got me thinking. He's going to try shooting some macro. Okay. I got this so close that my camera is touching what I'm shooting. It still shoots. So that's not it. Okay. Now, oh, if you if you ever know what one of these um like uh, lip balms look like up close, it's pretty creepy. It's full of pocket dust. Uh, Bev says, thank you for the volume trigger. And Bev, you know how to get the volume trigger. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Right, Isn't right. It it's the top. Unless it's, you change it, it's the top volume button, top volume, yes. top left. Um, let's talk about a new app that came out this week from Capture One. Capture One is a photo editing software. Uh, it's sort of a rival to Lightroom. I'm not that familiar with it. Some photographers use it. They came out with an app that lets you connect your phone to the camera, your big camera, directly into the phone. And then let you take pictures on your Sony, and then you look at them on your iPhone on your four point six point seven inch screen, where you have a lot more real estate. I think I have a three point five inch screen on my Sony, and for the for the joy of doing this, you could pay five dollars monthly or sixty dollars a year. What's your reaction, my friend Doc Rock? I use two programs similar to this right now, built into. Um, Sony cameras, it used to be called Imagine Edge. They recently changed the name to Creators App. And I like it because on the newer phones, it uses the NFC now to connect, so it's much quicker. It used to be a pain in the butt to get the Sony cameras in the weird phone app to work properly. But now it's gotten a lot better and it works really well. Secondarily, I'm using an app called Monitor Plus. And with Monitor Plus, I'm normally using it in video mode. It does work in photo mode, but it it allows you, if you've ever seen somebody use uh, an Atomos Ninja or a Shinobi, you know, the kind of big monitors you stick on top of your phone, it basically turns your phone into that. So it's monitor with the plus sign. And I've used that a lot to do a, a bunch of triggering for, you know, shots and for video and things like that. So I would probably use it because in certain situations, putting the phone on a tripod, I mean, sorry, putting the camera on the tripod and then being able to trigger remote, interact with the person more, <laughs> imagine shooting dogs. It's really good for people that got to shoot dogs because your hands are free, which is why most dog shooters shoot with a, a remote, right? So now you have a remote that you can see 
and you can get in there and you can be like, hey, Fido, well, over here. It would work great for me. I do headshots in my garage, which Doc Rock came and visited the other day and he saw the garage. And I forgot would, to it, ask you to do a headshot. I'm so stupid. I'm so dumb too because I should have done one. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I but, totally forgot. But people <laughs> would like to see what the pictures look like. And if I could just show them on the iPhone, it would be a lot easier than the back of the Sony. Um, I tried connecting my phone to the camera and you know it, it didn't work. I have, I have the seven day free trial and I connected the USB-C into the Sony and the lightning into the phone, but no, 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 that's not the right cable. You need the, um, there's a camera connector cable that Apple will sell you for $30. And that's what you're supposed to use. You so don't need that. You don't need hey, that? Here, you, ready, you ready for the hack? Yeah. Go onto the Amazon box and look for an iPhone OTG cable or an iPhone OTG adapter. OTG stands for on the go. Yeah. That basically fully activates the USB portion of the bottom. You have the, sorry, you just got to open the door. Okay, Hello? live broadcasting at its best. Doc has a visitor. Yeah, someone's in the elevator Six, saying hi. 16, 1603. Yeah. 1603. And just just give it to the person at the door. Okay. He's getting some incredible tech gear oh, delivered to him right now as we speak. And we could only wonder what it might be. In the right? front of the elevator, there is buttons on the Let me encourage everybody mind. while we wait for Doc to come back to submit some questions. We right, would love to answer some there. of them for you. And uh, yeah, it could so be about anything. It could be about live. It could be about iPhones. could be uh, whatever's on your mind today. We don't want to get into politics, yes, but uh, we'd love to talk about and gear and stuff. Great. So Thank please you. submit and let us uh, join the conversation. And uh, I don't there know... I don't know what an OTG cable is. What is it? Uh, it stands for on the go. Yeah. Uh, sorry. The DoorDash person, we have elevators with the buttons on the outside. Yeah. He gets in the elevator without pressing any buttons, and now he's riding the, he's, he's riding the elevator. I'm like, hello, you don't know how to work an elevator, dude. Anyway, um, on the go cable is basically, uh, a lot of phones have them. Yeah, use this when you fly a drone. Uh, it's made to just activate the USB section of that, make sure you have full USB access as opposed to the charge and sync. And you can get one from Amazon for probably like less than 10 bucks. Um, there's even OTG adapters, which is go into the lightning and just turn right into a little USB, in which case you can put a USB A to C cable. It's very simple. So this OTG cable, is it lightning on one side and USB C on the other? Normally, what they are are lightning to USB A female, but you can get actual OTG cables that are lightning to whatever. Because um, I use one for my Mavic when I want to fly my Mavic and stick the iPhone in the controller. You use the US the U the OTG cable in order to allow the phone to be used as the monitor to the drone. Okay. I just use a lightning cable in the drone. So Yeah, they got better now. In the beginning, oh. they didn't. Okay. Now it works because okay. DJI figured it out. But before, Qu they didn't do that. Question from Todd. I have a Sony RX104. Me too. No, actually, I have the RX10. And I use Imaging Edge to move my photos from the Sony to the iPad or iPhone. Connects via Bluetooth. That is true. That This is just another thing that they're off. They're, I think the difference is taking the picture and having it immediately go to your iPhone, right? No, Image Edge no. does that too. And Image Edge has been changed. Well, actually, no, on the RX, on the RX100, it'll still be um, Image Imagine Edge. It's what, so um, why, Imaging Edge, sorry. Why would anybody in their right mind pay 60 bucks a year for this app? Because Capture One is Capture One. Capture yeah. One comes with... Uh, Mm, a Porsche badge, you know, it's a okay. it's a moniker of professionalism. Okay. It will guarantee you do much more than the built-in app that comes with your phone. 
Okay. Let's put it that way. Lightroom, That's what can, I'm trying to say. You can tether Lightroom as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. Te tethering requires tethering. This doesn't yeah. require tethering. Okay. Now, speaking of apps, you showed me an app the other day that you were really excited about. It's this new road app. Tell everybody about this app and what it does. Oh, this app is so good. And let me see. Do I have a road over here? Now we're, we're going into audio and because uh, both of us like to interview people. And we have to bring mics around with us, right? But, uh, I do have... Whoops. <clears throat> I do have uh, road mics here. So... Yeah. You want to take your Rode mic if you have it. You don't have to. You can just use the built-in, I the built-in thing. But if you plug this guy in right here, and you plug the bottom into your phone, there is this app called Rode Capture. This app is so good. Here's the best part, people. It costs all of free ninety-five. Free ninety-five. Make sure we emphasize the free. Free so, negative 95, you mean, <laughs> right? In Hawaii, we say free 95, meaning it's free. Okay. It's really, it's it's a dumb statement. Yeah. Um. So, you see, you're, that means your brain is too pedantic for that joke. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's not your fault. Uh, so you basically power this on. It turns on the mic. So there's the microphone there. And... In here it says Rode Wireless Me is connected on the screen. What's really cool about this app, whether you use the microphone or not, it has a dual camera mode. So with the dual camera mode, you can say run a split. Now what it's doing is showing you this side and that side simultaneously. Both sides, in, for the front camera in, and the back camera. The option here is I can tell the video to be record to be recorded. Hello, English is my second language. I can tell the video to be recorded as a single file showing both cameras in one uh, picture, or I can have it do individual files. So I get two separate files. So if I like to go back and edit, I can do that too. Okay, let's just let Bev know that it's R-O-D-E. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, I have to put the proper umlaut in. It's option O. Do you um, know that? Okay, so you, you, th you're you using the new uh, Rode ME mics. Can you use the old uh, wireless wireless go-tos? Yeah, it works with any Rode mic. It even works with um, where the Rode Lavalier. I like to okay. use that, that word. Okay, so the advantage of this app is that you can record uh, uh, two video feeds. This is an audio app, but you can record two video feeds at the same time with a free app by just plugging in your mic. Uh, 100%. So so that sounds cool. We definitely want to get that road capture. Might write that down. I believe Greg has a question. I have not been able to read it, but let's see what Greg has to say. Do you think the iPhone switch to USB-C will have any kind of impact on the accessory market? Of course. Of course it will. Yes. Right? Yes. It, it, okay. I'll be honest. I don't want it to go USB-C, and it's not for what everybody else's reasons are. Most people, they don't want it to go to USB-C because they have a myriad of lightning-oriented things. The reason why I don't want it to go USB-C is USB-C is 8 pins and lightning is 16. Lightning is self-healing pins, self-reassigning pins. USB-C is not that intelligent. Lightning cables cost more and have more things in them because there's a little teeny tiny, like, you know, chip in there in the end. And that's why MFI cables, when you plug in a cable that's not MFI made for iPhone, you'll get a warning that says, I don't know what kind of cable that is. It'll work, it'll charge, but it won't do much more than charge. So Lightning, really, really smart if this okay, pin but, on a very... But, but. They're making yes, the change. Yes, yes. They're making the change, so there's nothing we can do. So um, you think so? Yeah, they're, they're making drag the change. It out as long as possible. No, they're making the change, which means that there's going to be everybody's going to have to get new cables so and new devices. So you think devices. 14 will have it? I think the 15 will have it. I mean, sorry, 15. I have a 14. I think in the my 15 hand. <laughs> will be USB-C. I think they've, I mean, pretty much have said it. And the iPad is USB-C, and we're just going to have to get more cables. I mean, the good news well, the is the iPad's Thunderbolt. Okay, but we all have USB-C 
for uh, for for that and the GoPro and the drone and the Sony and and everything else in the world. So. I, I, I take it back. We may not need a lot of new cables, but what about the devices that plug into Lightning? We'll have to get n- new ones of those. Yeah, I, I guess. Well, everything I have nowadays is is USB C anyway, so I think it'll be fine. It was just like the clock, which I don't use anymore because it turned the phone sideways. Maybe that's finally why we got turn the phone sideways action on a nightstand is because you know of that. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So we are going to basically downgrade our connector to match Europe because Europe was complaining and they, I, I don't think it was going to make the 15. I think they would, they would go one more year if they can get away with it legally, but they have lost that lawsuit. So they might have to do it at 15. Okay. In which case, well, I welcome it. I, I, I have enough cables as it is, and this is just one more cable. I will not need to have to remember, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'd like to show off your Instagram for a second. And uh, uh, oh. by the way, I want to remind everybody, Doc Rock is the dean of Ecamm. He's the guy who tells you how to do everything. And he has showed me a lot here. Uh, the reason that my background is gray is because he said to paint it gray. He told me to do that. And my c- background colors are not as rich as his because I, I, my desk is too close to the wall. Uh, but uh, every inspiration is right here. And in fact, I'm wearing these heads, this headset today, wired headset, because he told me I'm not allowed to wear Bluetooth head, headphones, earbuds, when I'm going live. That's what he said. And you could blame him. But um, so far, it's working out. I haven't had any problems. So it works, well, it works much better. Let, let's you, take you know a look. We're, look, funny? we're looking at your Instagram right now. Yesterday, I was very impressed with this. Is everybody seeing this? I loved how he was able to split the screen here, put himself in front of a press release. And let's go back and have him tell us how he did that. I just have to click that button and make it work again. But it's not. Doc Rock, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? There you go. Oh, okay. Let's bring you back in. Okay. That's what I was doing wrong. Is I got to make this big again. This got small. Okay, there you are. Tell everybody how you did that. Okay. Well, it's relatively simple. In, I mean, now, I, now I'm self-conscious. Green screen. It's, the it's, phone. Okay, so he put himself in front of a press release, and he did this in Instagram Reels, and he used yes. the green screen option. Even though okay, he I'm didn't do a green screen, that. right? Correct. I did not do a green screen. So let me click to start this. And then other device. Go right here. Go to Instagram. And so there I am. Here I am on Instagram. So I press this button and I hit real. And then in the real is just me, right? If you press green, then you get the green screen. And so now you're just in there. So all you do is press this button. To change the background, it says right there, change background. So I can choose one of that, or I can go to the camera roll, and let's just say I pick this guy, right? Yeah. So now I'm ready, and I can say, did you guys know that on the Stream Deck, you can see here, I am using a Stream Deck YouTube pack. What this allows me to do is jump to 90% of the video, 40% of the video, speed up, slow down, mute, enlarge, uh, closed captions, skip to the next video, or rewind 10 seconds for it. So using the stream decks, I made some YouTube controls because I do most of my learning on YouTube. So having stream deck controls to fly around YouTube will really help you speed up your learning process. Where do we get, where do we get those? Where do we get the YouTube pack? You made it? You (laughs) you want to make it available for people? Oh God, now you want me to do work? Um, I probably can. <laughs> I just just hobbled it together, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. Well, just reach out to us on social media, and hopefully, we'll be able to help you there. Um, okay, so anyway, oh, we have a bunch more stuff coming in here. Uh, okay, Al Anonymous is here from the Mark Thompson Show. Love your photos. Thank you, Al. Though I don't think that's really your name. But hey, what do I know? Uh, Bev says, do either of you know what the iPhone 15 camera upgrades might be? Well, we could only guess. The, 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 the rumor the rumor, and the, uh, coming from the analysts who 
uh, have their ears to the ground talking to the suppliers is that it will be a 48 megapixel camera um, for all the phones and that the telephoto will be, if not a 10X, could be a 20X, but will definitely be a higher range. The Galaxy right now is a 20X. Uh, is it 10X? It's a 200 millimeter lens, optical uh, telescope lens uh, on the Galaxy, and I think they'll be matching that. Um, we'll see, because they don't tell us anything. They'll announce it right after Labor Day. What, this, this is my best guess is what's Doc Rock had to say. I really believe that it's primarily just the phone. Um, sorry, like you said, just the telephoto side of it. I think we will get better night um, production because it always gets better because the pro the chip gets better, and that that um, neural learning really helps out a lot. And I think the other thing that we're going to see is with the sort of range finder body shape type thing coming back in action we're gonna see film recipes in raw okay i'll look forward to that um al says scary how efficient the facial tracking versus artificial background is in other words when doc did that thing in instagram and just psh, cut himself right out that was pretty cool. Um, one thing, I don't have a picture here to show you, but if you go to my Instagram, you'll see how I shaved. I gave Doc a nice little shave, an AI <laughs> shave. Photoshop. Where I did it in Photoshop, and I just said, shave his head, please. And it did it very nicely. Um, there's been a lot of talk about using Photoshop to do all, all sorts of weird things and to put things in the photos that don't belong there. I've been using it just for time-saving things, uh, taking out a fence, taking out a pole. Um, I actually did one shot. It was a family shot, and they were all in front of a table, and they didn't like the table there. So I just yanked the table out. took me a little while. would have taken me days had I done it the old way. Now I just ask it to do it. So pretty cool. Photoshop is $10 a month, uh, a creative cloud. And uh, you might want to try out the beta. It's pretty cool. Doc, you have thoughts about that beta? Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> like the amount of stuff that you can do in, instead of spending so much time in like Lightroom or trying to figure out all kind of weird ways to move stuff, it's so good. I was watching somebody move the you know the poles so that you don't drive into a building that the little short stubby poles that drop down so you can drive in the guy went during a time of day where they just so happened to be up so he took the picture and he removed them and the model it just looked perfectly it was so good it even had one that was touching her legs and it was able to make it go away without making her legs disappear this is the biggest photography advance in photoshop that i can recall oh in over a decade if not more how about you Oh, I think it is hands down maybe one of the most important things to happen to us since layers in Photoshop. Um, content Aware Fill was the last one that was really cool and, and also Sky Replacement. So that was three or four years ago. Content Aware Fill was where you, 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 could, you could take out stuff and move, move things around. Uh, the Sky Replacement was big where you could just yank out a sky and, and make, you make the sky darker or put in clouds or whatever. So that was big, but this is way bigger. Todd says, I have thousands of photos that I scanned and I'm planning to purchase Topaz AI to enhance them. They are good already, pretty good already ready but i can use a boost your thoughts have you used topaz i have not doc rock i bet he has i have i have topaz is good what's funny is i use the topaz video one which is even more psycho it's, it's expensive though but topaz ai works really well it's probably the best noise removal tool in the business okay but i gotta say I come from an era when I started the first digital cameras where they were really noisy. The cameras now are not noisy. I mean, you've got to work really hard to get noise we'll in there. We'll put it in noise back. I will put, <laughs> I will shoot at 3200, I'll shoot at 6400, and they do not look noisy. So I don't need as much help with noise now, do you? No, not at all. And it's funny because, again, nowadays I'm putting the noise back. I bought a camera with film simulations. So if I'm shooting Agfa or, you know, uh, Fuji Films or Fuji Color or something like that, I'm actually going into adding noise grain because the camera's too good. 
Okay, I will say, when I just talked about uh, um, ISO ranges and 3200 and 6400, I'm talking about shooting on cameras, on like the Sony, because uh, so, yeah. I'm a Sony shooter. Um, the iPhone is noisy. The iPhone is noisy in the evening, so I take that back. Once the sun goes down, it can get pretty noisy. Um, I so, think that will get improved on the next one. Yeah, we have a question from Roy from Arizona. Do you think Hi, the Roy quality of the 10X will be better than the 14 Pro Max? Yes, I do. How about you? Yes, it always. I think is. so too. Um, I think I think we will get possibly an optical 10x, a digital 20x. Well, digital doesn't count. Digital's yeah. crap. But I think, yeah, I but think we'll, we'll get optical 10x that will pull 20. We might even get optical 20. Sensors are getting good. Um, Roy has another question because I know he asked, asked uh, earlier at the iPhone photo team. He wants to know about a good. Um, um, car mount for his GoPro. And I have had the experience of using a suction cup, but I didn't like it. I like the Jaws, which is the clamp that you can clamp onto the windshield wiper. What's my friend from Hawaii say? I, I use a Scoshi. That's not the right word. I, I think I want to call it that. Um, it's It's basically a mount that doesn't come off. I got to get the link for it because the name... The name is, is weird, but it's really cool because you take it and you give it a little twist lock and it's in place. It ain't going nowhere. It's in there like swimwear, as we say. Okay. Uh, well, he looks that up. Um, we talked about that. Please uh, submit some more questions. Uh, when I met Doc, Doc Rock the other day, uh, he was using, well, actually, let me ask you something. Did they, do your friends call you Doc or do they call you Sean? Nobody calls me Sean except for the police. Okay, so so uh, everybody calls you Doc. Yes. And how many times a day do they say, "What's up, Doc"? The, only the first time I meet someone, they say that. After that, no one ever says it again because they know. I've probably heard it a couple of hundred thousand times, but okay. I don't care. I like it. Okay, how did you become Doc? I was a paramedic in the army, and they don't want you to try to remember your name. When they're in pain, they just yell, Doc, and one of six people come and bandage you up. <laughs> okay. That's, hey, Doc. And then I got the Doc Rock because uh, one of the nurses I used to work with, she was an elderly lady, but I used to DJ when, on my time off. Everybody else would get off and go to sleep. I would get off and go work at the club. So she used to call me Dr. Rock and Roll, and that became my DJ name. Doc okay. Rock. It's a good one. Uh, when I met my friend Doc Rock the other day, he had this little Yulanzi Yul thing that yes. it, that snapped into put went on top of your tripod. It it's advertised on Amazon as a five piece doodad. Tell everybody about it because when I got it, it only came in this this little box. I That's only got correct. one piece out of it. Aren't there four other pieces that that should go with it? Tell everybody uh, what well, it is. Tell everybody what it is. I'm trying to see if I have any of my speed clip stuff down here. Uh, I think it's all upstairs. It is a cool little tripod end that, okay, so here's a, here's a problem. This is my iPhone cage, and this is my PGY Tech little tripod that I use all the time. Every time I want to use this, I have to take this plate off, screw it to this little cage, and then put it here, and it just too much. You just don't even want to bother with it anymore. With the Alonzi, you just give the little two buttons on the side of squeeze and you pull it off because you keep all of the little end pieces on, right? So what it allows you to do is it's basically a speed connector clip similar to the old quick action plates that Monfrotto used to make, but they're just so tiny because nowadays cameras are small and light and you don't really need all of that. So it is a highly effective way. Now, how is it five pieces? There's the body, there is the plate, there is the screw that you use to, it came with a little thumb screw thing that you yeah, use but, to put but it. I, but I didn't get any of those. All I got was this it's little thing. It's a plastic thing. bag. It should be a little plastic bag with a little no, teeny thing it, that looks like a quarter. Out. That's it. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That, those are the that, five pieces? Yeah, that's the thing. So you need that. That is how you tighten. I mean, you can use a coin if you want, but I think they started making them like that because coins are rounded and slots are flat. And although everyone can still use a coin, 
if you when the coin you over tension and it slips out it rips the it strips that's the word it strips the little piece a little bit and so sooner or later you can't get it to bite on anything okay so so what you're telling me when they when they make this stuff the, they count everything as a piece so this little thing would then connect to the cage and if i wanted to take it off i just click the um this button no no yeah so what's the advantage yeah okay so screw it back on yeah now squeeze a little button on the side don't put the camera on yet don't put the camera on yet yeah squeeze a little button on the side and take the plate out where's the plate oh in here no squeeze the button with your with your left yeah. hand there you go now pull that forward or backwards uh-huh yeah come on jeff come on you can come do it what? <laughs> The the plate here. Uh, the plate. Uh, ah, there you go. Right. There we so, go. So now, now you have your second and third piece in your hand right now. Right. Now screw now wait. Don't put that back. Screw it to the cage now and then use that little quarter thing to make it tight. Okay. This goes on the cage. Yes. Okay. I the hope tiny the, piece. I hope viewers find this fascinating. Um it I is fascinating I because for for people that use iPhones, okay, um, where was Roy? Roy mentioned about the GoPro thing, right? Yeah. So I have it on the bottom of my action cam. I, I use Insta360 instead right. of GoPro. Same smell, different nostril. But what the reason why, I leave the Ulanzi part stuck in the car, and I have that little piece that you just pulled off. Oh, I could have just pulled mine out of my bag and showed you. So this lives on the bottom of my action camera. Right. The piece like this is in my car. So when I jump into my car and I want to shoot with the RX-1, right, from the dashboard, I just pop this in because this already exists in the car. When I want to use my larger tripod, I just use that because it already is stuck to my tripod. When I want to use the monopod, I just slide it on and off because another one of these is stuck to my monopod. So I have about eight of these. And they're stuck to all myriad things. And so when I need to do an overhead shot or a car shot, monopod, tripod, all you do is squeeze this little button and then slide your piece in and out. That's okay. what they're for. Okay. So it really brings up the old uh, problem. You get a box, you got a thing in here, and you have this little thing, and they don't give you any, any information about what you're doing. It needs a guy like Doc Rock to tell me what's going on. And Bev, I think, is agreeing with me. I'm happy to see I'm not the only one who has trouble putting things together or apart. Even two tech gurus have been around. Of course, he knows a lot more than I do because he, he solved the problem. I did not. You know, uh, I, ever since I was a little kid, I was a take stuff apart person. So I see things from how did that get to together? Like when you see that picture of your road, yeah. My brain immediately goes, how did they make this road? You needed rocks. You needed some vigilant. You needed some, some asphalt, paint. some pitch, <laughs> some paint, right? You needed a thing that's heavy to make it nice and flat. And then what are they filling the cracks with? What kind of pitch is filling the crack? It's not an empty crack. That crack has been re My brain just does that. Well, hopefully next time that, that people tune in, they're going to see this picture way bigger because uh, my <laughs> friend here convinced me to get a four-foot version of it. On a vinyl print, and we're going to see how that, that is looks. It's going to be so cool. Oh yeah. my God, it's going to be so cool. Of course, I also want a TV behind me like he's got. I want to do everything like he does. And I want to be You're in Hawaii. You're going to want to be patient putting the vinyl on those so that you don't like make gigantic air bubbles, unless you have a heat gun that helps you take them Oh, out. it looked like I could use um, thumbtacks. No? Oh, you're just going to hang it. That's even yeah. cooler. Right. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't have to. It's a studio. Okay. In, in, um, in your house, you put it down. Before we go, you know, you're the Dean of Live. You're, you're live many hours a week. For folks who are watching or maybe thinking about going live, uh, let's, Ecamm Software is, is a TV broadcast studio in, on your computer. Uh, tell yep. everybody about how simple it could be. Well, the first thing you need to know is Jeff uses it, so never mind. I'm just joking. Um, it is really easy. I I like it because it gives you an opportunity to create content without putting the barriers in of wanting everything to be perfect or wanting everything to be like over edited. Nowadays, people want to meet the 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 person you know 
behind the thing. Uh, Wizard of Oz. That's what I was trying to say. You know, people want to meet the person that's sort of like Wizard of Oz. They just want to know who's behind the wall. So with live, it gives you a chance to interact with your community. It allows you to create content faster. And you just have a much better connection. So to me, I use it for everything. Hey, Makai. Uh, when we, we, we met up on Monday and uh, we got out of the car and immediately... My friend, he had his phone up, and he says, here we are in Hermosa Beach, and he is live on Instagram and walking down the street. And uh, I think that's how you got to do it today, right? Yeah, yeah, because people, you know, like how you build a community, how you build an audience, and even just how you get good at this stuff. Like everyone's here trying to learn how to take photos and things like that. Uh, the only way to take photos is take photos, right? Yeah, so learn from them, yeah. I, I can't remember if it was Scott Bourne or Rick Salmon that t told me this back in the day when I was first getting into the business. Um, I was like, how do you get really good at this? And I think it was Rick. Rick said, you have to look at 10,000 photos. I like, mean, look at 10,000 photos. I'm trying to take pictures. And he goes, yeah, but you still got to look at 10,000 photos because in looking at it, you'll, uh, you'll start to understand what the camera can and cannot do and produce yeah. and, yeah, and but see, I've been I on would, that mission ever since. I would amend that. You need to edit ten thousand photos. You, you <laughs> That's need even to better. you need to see all your mistakes and see yes. what you how you improved it and learn from. I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to do that again. And you know, and uh, you know, do you take a bunch of pictures of somebody hanging standing in front of trees with branches coming out of their ears? You're going to learn not to do that anymore. You know. That's so true. That's so, so true. Yeah. Yeah. It's man. And editing has gotten so good now. Like the, the amount of stuff that you can do is quite impressive. So, but so I'm going on my big trip, uh, July 2nd, I'm going to be uh, touring the West for July 2nd to roughly July 31st, August 1st. And I'll be shooting episodes in Moab and Monument Valley and all these great places. And I'll be coming back with m mountains and mountains and mountains of footage. Now the doc Rockaway would be, he's just going to go live every day. He's just going to say, here I am in Moab. Check it out, right? Yes, always. Because somebody, here's the thing. You go there, you have an itinerary, you have a plan, you have all these things in mind, right? Yeah. But in oh, here's a prime example. We did it the other day. So I'm there, right? And I'm like, you know, I need to get some whole beans to, to bring home. For my coffee machine, it just came while we were, I just got the text, by the way, so that's why I say my head. And if I were live walking around, right? Say I didn't even know that we were going to meet up. If I were live walking around and you saw me live, you would say, hey, right behind you, like not even a half a block, there's Verve Coffee, Verve, whatever the heck it's called. Go over there, go see Jessica and tell her to make you uh, a medium flat white the way Jeff Graham gets it. And I'll be like, okay, I would just pop over there. I would leave you on while we walk over there because it's only a half a block, right? We go back and be like, hey, I'm doing this live stream. My friend Jeff says, you make the meanest flat white. And she's A, happy you made the business. B, you told other people a good place to go. I'm not just keeping this information to myself. And then C, I turn around and buy $100 worth of beans and ship them at home, which I did, right? But imagine if more people treated the sharing of information like that, instead of like um, siloing all of this information. So that's why I like to go live because you never know. I had all these plans to do something else and you had the gym that says, don't miss this coffee shop because it's amazing and it is. And so, you know, you would, you would lose out on that if you were busy trying to hide because you know, you're scared. Yeah, uh, don't think we're either of us are scared. Um, we <laughs> got a comment not. here. I've been learning so many people get offended when you take pics in public and they might be in the frame. Well, I have one way of dealing with that. When you're taking a picture, go like this, make a make crazy faces like you're doing a selfie and they're not going to be offended because they're thinking you're taking a picture of yourself, right? I, you know what? That is, I never did that one before. Um, I, I'm, I'm from Wide Eye and most people don't say anything to me, <laughs> but no, I. What I would do in that situation, especially if I did it with my phone, is I would just open it up real quick and show them that they're not in the frame. Or if they are, I'd open it up in the app that allowed me to go like this and be like, God. Yeah. Nobody's ever it's like, have you, have, have you seen uh, any commercials about uh, any Samsung phone recently? 
I can remove the entire half of the frame in a matter of seconds. So even if you are in a frame, I don't want my family to see you either. You're not that good looking. <laughs> so that's exactly how I would handle it. Yeah, so, I have not yeah. had anybody complain. I've never um, had anybody complain either. Yeah, the only only time was I was doing a time lapse at a train station and a blind woman came up and complained. But yeah, the person with the blind woman. Um, Doc, it's getting to be that hour. So tell everybody I, you're, all the wonderful places that they can find you. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You can find me all over. I'm still trying. I, I was thinking, like, how did the blind person know you were taking the time? But you you fixed it. So anyway, um, I am all over the Internet at D-O-C-R-O-C-K, Doc Rock, on just about everything. And in cases where I'm not, somebody beat me to it. That's very rare. So I'm, I'm normally to be found. Um, yeah, okay. it, it is. It is definitely one of those things. And my website is photowalkstv.com and jeffersongram.net. Uh, both Doc Rock and I are going to be speaking on Saturday at the Video, St- Video Storytellers Conference. And uh, that is, uh, I should have had a URL up h- here. Um, maybe my friend Doc can find it for us. I, I am going to be doing quickly. the Beginner's Guide to iPhone Photography. I'm going to walk you through the menu and the modes and tell you what everything is because Apple doesn't tell you. So uh, check me out there. I am the first session in the morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And Doc, I believe, is talking about the uh, joy of going live. And he's also going to be on a panel discussion with our good friend, Frederick Van Johnson. And I think they're going to be talking about AI and photography. Am I correct? Correct. Correct the mundo. You know, it's going to be so much fun. Like, I just can't, I can't wait to do this. I like doing this because it always just like opens your eye up to what's available and what's out there and what other people are doing. So, you know, is it video story tellers conference.com? Is that what the URL is? Yes, it is. That is. Okay. So go check us out there Saturday. Uh, look for, look for us on social media. I'm at Jefferson Graham on Instagram and, uh, you know me on YouTube, youtube.com slash photowalks TV, doc rock from Honolulu, Hawaii. Big, big, big round of applause. Um, <laughs> Oh, but wait, wait. One oh, last I, question. I, One last I, question from Roy came in. Maybe he could here, find the name of that chat, mount. But I realize, here I got it. I'll, I'll text it to you. I realize that if I put it in there, you can't see it because uh, you have your, your, as you should, you have your link moderation on. It's called the snap mount. And here is the link. There you go. Uh, okay. This, it's I'll, I'll, I'll send it's it off to good. Roy. All right. Let's say goodbye. Thank you, Doc Rock. Mahalo. Let's do this again. Yay.